Hi everybody, welcome to today's webinar. We're going to give it a few minutes and just wait for everybody to trickle in. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Erin McDonald, Marketing Manager at UBM Fashion. I'd like to welcome to you today to the Women's Fall Winter 2018-2019 Trend Webinar presented by Fashion Snoops. Before we start the presentation, I would like to go over a few housekeeping items with you. To hear the presentation, please make sure your computer volume is turned all the way up. If you are having any issues, please make sure to check your system settings. Note that you will be placed on mute for the duration of the call. All questions will be addressed via the Q&A chat box at the end of the presentation. Before we dive into the presentation today, I would like to share with you our 2018 UBM Fashion Market Calendar. This is for New York, Las Vegas, and Japan. We have taken a few steps to reimagine the marketplaces in 2018 to help you grow your business more effectively and efficiently. You will be receiving this presentation after the call, so you can make notes of all the dates then. You'll see the calendar up now. And now I'd like to introduce you to our speaker today, Melissa Moylan, VP and Creative for Women's Wear at Fashion Snoops. Melissa is recognized as an authority in trend forecasting and leads Fashion Snoops' women's wear team to provide analysis across runway, trade shows, and retail. In addition, we are also joined by Celeste Bohm, Vice President of Retail Engagement for UBM Fashion. Celeste will be here to address any questions you may have. And now I'm going to hand it right over to Melissa. Thanks for the introduction, Erin. Um, so what we'll be speaking to today are the women's seasonal narratives for fall, winter, 1819. Um, we'll go through four major seasonal narratives, including key takeaways. It could be um, a mood, a spirit, an item, colors. We'll speak a lot to key items, um, as well as brand alignment that you'll see throughout UVM shows. Before we kick it off, we will be going through some of our macro cultural trends for 2018-2019. These are four key trends in culture that we've identified that we feel that really influence our industry and it's just something that everyone should have a pulse on. The first one that we have is called Through Space and Time. Um, this is where we question physical space versus virtual space. 
and we explore this idea of escapism versus virtual reality. Um, I think we could all agree that our lives are very much interconnected and we're living in this constant stream of information. Um, convenience and integrated product are really key here. And so some of the takeaways um, that we identify would be escapism, just knowing that we're kind of growing exhausted by this fast pace of life and just the speed and overall volume of newness and information. So we really just seek this escape um, from our daily lives. We're also going into unknown worlds. Um, that's the exploration of outer space from um, just taking a very remote vacation that invokes this um, element of fantasy. And then third, we have virtual reality. Um, and this is really escapism of our daily lives. It started off as something that was much more video game centric, but we're looking into different ways that we can incorporate escaping our daily lives. The next cultural trend that we have is called human nature, and this is really the relationship of our physical health as well as that of the environment. So we're seeing that explored through what we're calling off the grid, um, where we're exploring more suburban destinations as well as remote communities that are really having a comeback. There's also biotechnology. Um, that's something whereby we're looking into technologies and products to really improve our lives and our health as well as the future of our planet. There's ecotourism, and that would involve traveling sustainably, um, also keeping in mind the factor that a lot of travelers are now really opting to stay in green accommodations than ever before. Next up is emotional capacity, um, and this is really about the notion of a gut reaction. It takes less than three seconds to have a gut reaction to anything. Um, and as we're really overwhelmed by more screens, um, robots, we're experiencing this longing for much more of an emotional and connection, um, a more authentic experience. Um, so through that, we're seeing spiritual practices. Um, we're seeing a spiritual evolution as we all search for this kind of deeper meaning to everything. Um, and I think we could all agree that that spiritual notion is becoming much more mainstream. There's also the notion of mindfulness. This is calling to understand and share feelings with each other um, and creating more of a unity amongst humanity. There's fragility and fear. Um, this, I think we could agree that we live under kind of this blanket of insecurity and we're not able to handle unpredictable or unexpected outcomes. Um, so we're looking into new ways of coping, gaining strength, um, as well as different ways to educate ourselves to move forward. The fourth cultural trend that we have is called identity. Um, and so this is about a progressively tolerant and accepting world and also becoming more fluid with how we identify ourselves. Um, that concept of identity is influenced, of course, by politics, religion, gender, race, and geography. Some of the key points here would be gender blur. Um, this essentially means that gender notions are gaining momentum as transgender celebrities, gender-free brands um, really become the new normal. Another key point here is personalization. Um, this one has played a really key role when it comes to online stores as well as e-commerce and I think retail as a whole. Um, it's about channeling this very customer-oriented um, notion as a physical store. Um, the final is modern relationships, and this one, I think we're constantly widening the definitions of traditional relationships, um, things that would include recognizing society in very different non-traditional um, notions from before. And now we'll move into the fashion trend portion of the presentation. As I mentioned, we have four main narratives, Sensei, Vanguard, New Romantics, and Terra. And in each one of those, we'll be exploring mood, takeaways, colors, items, as well as brand alignment and accessories. So the first one here is called Sensei, um, and this is really about balance. Sensei is someone who has achieved a certain level of mastery. Um, we could see that it's very modern and there's a lot of tailored influence here. 
The next page is the takeaways. Um, on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see we had forecasted out a visionary trend called the space between, trickled it down to this narrative sensei, and then also branching it out to a trend story or a capsule, as we call them, at Fashion Snoops, um, just a different variation on it in the women's or young contemporary market. So just to highlight some of those key takeaways, um, tailoring is really important and there's a huge comeback of tailoring that's very relevant. Um, there's definitely a Japanese influence that we're seeing here with kind of that mastery of tailoring. Reworked shirts, this is something that we've seen before, but it's definitely more and more relevant. Um, also that notion of reworking um, or just giving an update or a hack to a staple item. Minimalist lines, so that's something that has been happening for a while, but this is an update to it. Tunic layering, voluminous pants, wrap styling, and then a couple items, a power blazer, um, incorporating fluid volume to the look, and shibori prints. A little bit more on the mood for Sensei. Um, just to help set the tone a little bit more. Here it's very modern and it's very tailored, but there's also this notion of tradition and culture, especially when it comes to Japan. Um, so we're seeing those minimalist lines, but they're also incorporated with things that are a little bit more traditional. So taking something like the Japanese kimono and then incorporating that sort of styling. Also in terms of materials, um, a little bit more novelty going into something like a jacquard. Um, layering that really enables you to balance this tailored feeling as well as fluid volume. Some more um, words that just kind of are highlighted for this particular um, narrative, um, balance, mastery, corporate ID identification. And then going into the color palette. Um, this, I think there's two sides to it. The first is much more serene, um, and then there's also this rich cultural heritage that's a part of it. Um, so speaking to the serene spirit, dusty tones, um, so there you see some of those really soft um, tapestry as well as haze, um, which is like a light blue. Um, a soft color like lab as well as antique pink, which is um, your very pale, soft, um, understated pink. But then getting into um, reds. Red is something that we feel really strongly about overall, um, and we'll see it repeat in a couple other patterns. So going from the ID red, which is a little bit more blood-like, to a brighter samurai red. Um, and then going into some of the um, more rich cultural colors, such as Catalyst Green, also a really beautiful teal color in there called Knowing, um, and Eclipse Blue. So speaking to some of the must-haves here, we could definitely see where kind of the old and the new meet. Um, when it comes to layering, we love the wrapped sweater. Um, overall, we're seeing a lot of attention paid to different types of tied and wrap techniques as a detail, um, and that's just a great place to, to feature it kind of in sweaters or knitwear. There's also culottes that speaks to the volume statement on bottoms. Um, and here that has um, a little bit more of a Japanese slant with the side panels um, and the circle ring belt. There's a tunic, which is also a great layering piece. This one in particular is a little bit longer, but we also you know, appreciate styles that are a little bit shorter as well. Some other items, the reworked shirt. So again, going back to hacking wardrobe staples and taking that classic button down and what could we do that's new and exciting. Um, perhaps it's an asymmetrical hem, a cutout detail, deconstructed notions. There's also the sleeveless overcoat. Um, we've been seeing a lot more focus, especially for winter on outerwear that is, um, that's really kind of floor sweeping length. So super long, um, but here we're you know, looking at a tailored shape with sleeveless. Um, so it's a little bit unconventional and new. There's also the power blazer, which is something else we really believe strongly in. Um, the, the exaggerated or power shoulders are really important here. A couple of other items, the robe, you could definitely see that Japanese kimono influence when it comes to that wider sleeve. 
um, and the belted, the self belt detail. There's another style of volume pants, just your wide leg pant. This is also great um, with um, kind of this paper bag waist, which gives it a little bit of newness. And then the pantsuit, um, we're seeing overall that there's a lot more influence of tailoring. So that's um, you know, definitely something to consider in addition to the power blazers. A couple of footwear trends that we're seeing along with Sensei. Um, the first one is a statement pump. This one I think is a great um, because it has this crossover wrap technique um, and also this ankle tie to it. The ankle boot, um, which features a stiletto heel, the pointy toe, and it really has a minimalist um, spirit to it. The lace Oxford, um, this one featuring a low block heel um, and a little bit of leather patchwork influence. Some of the bags for Sensei, the canteen bag, um, I think this is nice because we're seeing that application of a novelty material such as jacquard or brocade um, applied to the handbag and then um, with the top handle detail. The pouch here, um, which really has a nice soft structure to it and incorporates again that tied um, or knotted technique when it comes to the accessory. And the crossbody bag, which has a much more structured feel to it. Some more of the accessories, um, just general accessories. This one is micro frames. Um, so we love this because it has such an exaggerated but slim silhouette, and it just feels really modern. Um, the rope belt, this one's great. Um, it has that knotted and looped technique to it. And then a sculptural earring in a nice polished silver um, that just really gives that um, nice, almost architectural feel to jewelry. And then here are a couple of the trend stories or more of the capsules when it comes to, um, you know, kind of receiving these in either the women's or young contemporary market. Um, so this is just another division of it and kind of how we see it um, taking shape. So this one's called Kaizen and it's for women's. You definitely see that tailored influence here, the influence of suits as well as those power blazers. Um, the reworked shirt, this is another great, great place for it. Also, the notion of layering a tunic with a pantsuit. Um, asymmetric lines, that adds something really new to the conversation as well. Um, and this is a great place, too, to explore some of the traditional um, menswear pattern. So something like a pinstripe would be great. Next, we have Serene. And this one's really beautiful. You could tell in the palette at the bottom. Um, that it embraces a lot of those wonderful soft tones to it. Um, so it just really has that nice kind of ethereal spirit um, when it comes to um, the look of it. So in terms of the material here, it's very sensual, looking at some of the nice silks um, as well as the knit layering. Um, wrapped sweaters is, are great to place here volume as a driver on bottom, such as the wide leg pants, and a lot of robe attention here. Some of the great brand alignment that we've identified, um, Stella and Ginger, they have a great robe style um, that really kind of embodies that Japanese spirit. Um, Renoir, this one has a little bit more of a tailored influence that you see um, through the trousers as well as that classic white shirt. Um, Luana Italy, which has great basket woven handbags. Hashtag, um, this one has um, a great power suit, for example, and then bang bags, which are really nice, um, kind of polished and very structured handbags. Then you can see on the slide the additional brands that also participate in this particular spirit. So the next narrative that we have is called Vanguard. Um, this is someone that we think is at the forefront of this progressive movement that's paving the way with new ideas. Um, there's also a lot of craft or DIY incorporated with this look. So some of the takeaways and where um, the inspiration came from, the maker movement, that's a really big one. Um, looking at protests through art, which is a really nice way to spin it. Um, experimental knits that gets that craft element across. 
There's also a 1970s Harlem spirit to this. So you do get that um, kind of vintage retro flavor, which you'll definitely see in the color palette. Um, bringing back the tracksuit and a little bit of a dose of athleisure here is definitely relevant. Um, vintage furs, craft details, mixed media constructions, things that don't ordinarily go together, expressionist art when it comes to graphics, and DIY denim, such as embroidery on denim. Um, a little bit more on Vanguard. Um, so this is, it's really a style that's made up of a hodgepodge of various crafts as well as vintage finds. Um, keeping in mind that maker movement, um, it's about kind of harboring this collaborative spirit um, and spreading positive influence. So you see both craft, but it's also making a statement almost like activism. Um, we're thinking of someone like a feminist um, that embraces this sort of hybrid aesthetic of individuality as well as community. So some more key words um, for this particular narrative, handmade, progressive, um, collaboration, and craft. The color for Vanguard, you can see it's really empowering, but it's also um, retro-spirited from the past. Um, the reds, once again, are really powerful here. We have a beautiful color at the top called Dichotomy, um, as well as an ID red, which is that deeper, almost blood-like red. Um, there's also, when speaking to that retro notion, Shelter Orange, as well as Insight Yellow, um, that kind of invokes that 70s spirit. There's also some really nice dusty neutrals towards the bottom. Um, such as uniform, foundation, or spackle. Um, and then we also have a couple of great midtones like woke, um, which also invokes that vintage spirit, as well as power colors like hope and dichotomy. So some of the must-haves here, um, we have the oversized sweater, just on a whole for, for sweaters, oversized um, or elongated styles are really um, trending. So we're seeing this one in particular with the statement in Tarja, in addition to that voluminous style. There's also flared pants. Um, this is really nice to explore texture. So something like um, a corduroy material that definitely invokes that retro spirit. The trucker jacket, which is just really great, I think, for the young contemporary junior market um, and exploring different materials here and textures that aren't as typical, but of course it could be a little bit more classic in a denim, for example. There's the track jacket or the entire track set, um, which as I mentioned, invokes that athleisure spirit um, that we're seeing incorporated to Vanguard. The fur coat, just a really great statement coat um, is great here. And the turtleneck, which we're seeing both in you know, a fitted style as well as more oversized sweaters. A couple more items for Vanguard for women's apparel, the slim midi skirt. Um, the mid-calf hem has been something that we've been seeing for quite some time now. Um, it's definitely um, reaching acceptance and we're seeing it a lot more um, both in skirts and dresses. This particular style is a sweater ribbed knit. Um, there's another great style of the wide leg pant. This one, um, like what we saw in, in um, the previous narrative, also has that paper bag waist. And then a sweater dress. Um, this one, of course, really plays with that mixed media contrast, um, but it could be something that's a bit more simple too. And then some footwear for Vanguard. Um, the first one is the platform boot. What's great about this one is that it has a stacked wood platform, and I think that gives it a nice um, retro aesthetic to it. There's also the high top sneaker for something a bit more casual, um, set to smooth suede with a nice contrast zipper on the side. The slide sandal, which is definitely more novelty territory um, with embellished buckles as well as fur lining to it. Some of the handbags that fit back to Vanguard, the mini top handle. Um, we love this one in color blocked fur that really invokes a nice message um, and some of those great kind of rust um, colors. 
the messenger bag, this one a little bit more traditional with a square body, but also has a retro strap trim um, and contrast to it. And the volume pouch, um, which is a little bit more into craft territory. So it has um, this element of undone thread as fringe. And general accessories, the newsboy cap, um, this one's great with a squared sort of shape to it um, in worn suede. There's also camp socks, um, so just playing with patterns such as an argyle. This is also a great place to incorporate lurex in it um, to make a little bit more of a statement with an accessory. And then square frames, um, we love these in frosted lucite um, that has really wide arms and thick frame overall. And then going into a couple of the trend stories or capsules that we're seeing really fit with the Vanguard spirit. Um, the first one is activist. So as you can tell, um, this one is a little bit more um, in your face when it comes to empowerment, feminism, artistic freedom. So we're definitely seeing a big graphic statement here. It could be you know, incorporated in prints and patterns, or it could be a detail that's embroidered, for example. Um, boxy tees or hoodies, it incorporates a much um, younger junior spirit. We're also seeing a lot of bomber jackets and polos here. Um, and it's definitely a denim friendly look here that could be wide leg or baggy um, and really just incorporating some of the embroidery to make it a DIY and make a statement. And then the next trend story that we have is called Harlem Funk. Um, this one definitely comes from direct from the 70s, um, looking into things like subway graffiti and allowing that to inspire graphics. Um, there's also some great materials from the era, so corduroy, fur trim, exploring um, vintage geometric shapes. And then that athleisure spirit definitely factors in here. Um, with track suits or track pants. So some of the brand alignment here, um, Alerto Macaulay, a great um, interpretation, kind of a, a graffiti spirit with a bomber jacket. Um, Rolex, this is great for denim, um, and it just incorporates a super high waist for denim um, that looks really great. Diff eyewear, um, so you definitely get that um, colored lens feel. And then Chimahara, um, some great footwear options that incorporate some of those um, nice vintage brown colors to a boot. And God Miami with statements on t-shirts. So the next narrative that we have is called New Romantics. Um, and this is really about leveraging the past to bring us closer to the future. It's definitely a Victorian um, influence theme. And speaking to some of the takeaways, um, material for this one is super important. There's so much velvet. And we're seeing a, just a lot of velvet spread um, from classifications in apparel as well as accessories and really that making the statement. Um, there's a collision of eras that we see, both things from the past, so the Victorian era, but also this more modern um, spirit as well, jewel tones when it comes to colors. Um, the pattern conversation is definitely about moody florals. It's very Victorian inspired, so you see that in shape with things like puff sleeves, this is definitely the place to um, incorporate special occasion dresses, romantic ruffles, um, but we're also seeing um, almost a Scottish notion that incorporates tailored blazers or plaids with a twist too. So a little bit more on modern Victorian um, or new romantic. So this one, it's about you know incorporating those more traditional notions of Victorian, but making it modern. So it could be something like a higher collar or a puff sleeve, but you'll pair it back to a slouchy pant. Um, speaking to the one cultural trend that we mentioned, escapism is factored in here. So we're looking at things um, that really inspire us from the past. So it could be something that's almost poetic um, when it comes to graphics, for example. Um, so we're really sparking this cur curiosity in the past, but we're making it relevant for today. 
some of the um, buzzwords for this, English monarchy, historic royal places, and future in the past. And some of the colors here, um, this is a really beautiful romantic palette. Um, it's very passionate, but it's also tender at the same time. Um, once again, we have that really powerful red um, somewhere in the middle called ID, the more blood red color. Um, there's also great jewel tones here, um, which really I think apply well to any evening conversation or special occasion. So we have orchid, um, catalyst, which is a really, really deep green, um, knowing, which is a nice teal, and nightshade. And then there's this balance, especially towards the top, um, of the soft and neutral tones. So you have the nice antique pink, um, temple, fog, and tatami. Some of the must-haves for new romantics, um, that mid-calf silhouette that we spoke to before, here it is again, but this time it's completely different because it takes on a fuller shape. Um, and it also incorporates pleating at the waistline so it looks a little bit more formal than the last one. There's also a slip dress. Um, so this is something that we have seen as a key item in dresses for the past couple of seasons, but here we think it's great because it's a little bit looser, um, more of a relaxed fit, and we're seeing it layered over um, a blouse or a mock neck top. There is, speaking to um, more of the dresses or evening dresses, the wrap maxi um, set to velvet is a really strong one. The wide leg pants, here you're seeing it in yet another variation. Here, keeping in mind that high pile material, such as velvet or corduroy. There is the cape when it comes to outerwear, and that definitely evokes um, almost that Scottish Highlands feel. Um, it could be a little bit darker, too. It doesn't have to be this long. It, it could be a shorter style. And then there's a nice style of overcoat. Um, and here, again, embracing that longer hemline in outerwear, um, but also taking on jacquard or burnout material that makes it much more novelty and really just embraces that Victorian spirit. Next, we have the power blazer. So this just nods a little bit to kind of Scottish Highlands reference. Um, and what I think is nice about it is that we're looking at a plaid, but then it has um, the lace overlay detail on it, which makes it a little bit more romantic um, and less, less traditional Scottish influence. Then we have the puff sleeve top. Um, this one I think is great, just as an update to any kind of bohemian blouse. Um, so this particular one has a shirt-like construction and different um, details when it comes to the bell sleeves, like tied string details. Then we have another turtleneck sweater where you could just see different variations. This particular one has a puff sleeve to it. Some of the footwear for New Romantics, this I think it really gets into kind of that Victorian period um, because we're looking at things like the Mary Jane and how do we update it. So there's a nice multi-strap detail um, with the stiletto heel. There's also the heeled mule. Um, and this one I think is great because it, in, it has the embossed velvet to it, which really just places it in that Victorian period. And then we also have the stocking boot, which is also done to velvet and has a nice um, knitted side detail. Some of the bags for New Romantic, um, the first one is the top handle. This one's great for evening. Um, it has a knotted rope handle and then it's done to satin and it has really nice um, elaborate embroidery or beaded detail. There's also for evening the top wristlet. Um, so once again, embracing that bead or embellished detail. And it has antique brass hardware. And then there is the micro bag. Um, this one could also you know, tap into the velvet trend with an embellished um, initial detail. Some of the general accessories here, um, we have the embellished belt, um, which, which is really nice with pearl detail. I think overall the pearl um, when it comes to accessories, this is a great place to position it. Um, there's also pearl earrings, and this is a particular mismatched style, which just looks a little bit more modern versus traditional. 
And then finally, there's the optical cat eyes, um, a little bit more of a novelty silhouette, um, the tortoise shell frame, as well as the scalloped um, edges. So looking into the trend stories or small capsules um, of new romantics, this one we called modern Victorian. Um, it's really great because I think this one is full on dark romance. It's youthful, but it's also very elevated, um, looking into inspirations such as the Renaissance or Baroque periods. Um, dresses, I think, you know, could veer a little bit more casual and not necessarily special occasions. So something like a slip or asymmetric dress. Um, again, we're seeing tons of velvet across all products here. So pants or dresses are definitely fair game. When it comes to tops, it's definitely um, inspired from that period um, with puff sleeves or mock necklines. There's also a lot of nice rich tapestries which evoke the past. And then this one in New Romantics, it's a little bit of a departure from what we just saw. Um, this one we're calling Great Plains, and it's definitely more of a youthful spirit, and it has, I think, more of a sense of bohemia about it. Um, I think this is where bohemia is, is going. Um, we're inspired by the Great Plains, a lot of nice homespun touches, and very um, romance, but it's a very sweet romance. Um, so it's something a little bit more casual, cotton shirts, quilted denim, um, also, in terms of prints, we're looking at florals here, but they're a little bit more um, ditzy, kind of wildflower prints, smaller scale, unlike those huge, beautiful, romantic, um, big flowers that we saw before. There's also a lot of embroidery here. Um, in terms of style, going into things such as um, the overalls or pinafores, um, midi dresses are great here, as well as the puff sleeve top. Some of the brand alignment, um, Lucy and Mattis looked really amazing when it came to special occasion dresses. So there's a couple examples there from um, embroidered sheer dresses to just beautiful ruffled and tier gowns. Um, also Jessica Elliott with um, some beautiful jewelry pieces um, that embrace either you know jewels or gemstone when it comes to necklaces and rings. Some additional ones, Chelsea and Walker, I think is great, um, just because it evokes that more modern and much more youthful spirit, but it's still pretty. Um, La Maison Tulula with great dresses, and then a couple of shoes from Nina, um, which embody you know that more Victorian spirit when it comes to heels. The final narrative that we have is called Terra. Um, and this is the one that really is, is in line with what's happening in nature. Um, it's one and of the earth. It's also about a heightened digital footprint. So you're seeing the play of both, you know, modern with technology as well as nature. Some of the key takeaways here um, that we love, um, in addition to that natural and digital hybrid, um, cozy sweaters when it comes to items, Outerwear is a really key one, so we love um, anything that's utility, like parkas. Um, this is another great place for high pile. Any kind of natural nature imagery, relaxed and oversized shapes, utility details. When it comes to the palette, we really love um, embracing shades of green, um, so looking in you know, specific shades, whether it's something that's much more foresty or artificial. Quilted surfaces just as a great texture or detail, and hybrid constructions of things that wouldn't ordinarily appear um, together are combined. So a little bit more on Terra um, and where we're inspired. Um, this is definitely coming from um, relocation and sanctuary away from an urban environment. Um, so really just embracing the earth, connecting um, with plants and their healing powers, going into the conversation of precious oils, stones, and herbs. Um, we love this idea of combining um, almost a scientific digital notion with raw nature. Um, so it has this scientific version of the future, but it's really a nice 
harmony or balance of both natural and digital. So some um, more of the words or buzzwords for this. Um, innovation, sanctuary of the earth, apothecary. The color palette here um, is really beautiful. I think it's definitely earth inspired, but there's also this digital element to it. Um, so the warm neutrals, there's a lot of great browns that are incorporated towards the top, such as the sacred ground, which is a really deep brown, and then going um, to the fawn and the henna, which are lighter, more like a tan. Um, speaking to those greens, there's such a variety here, um, and it could really range from your heirloom, which is almost like an army green and something that we're familiar with, but then it could get a little bit more artificial. Um, and by that, I would mean the colors like Aurora or Abyss towards the bottom, or that brighter shade of almost a lime algae. There's also a nice um, blue focus here, which could go um, more along the lines of a navy, like an eclipse or blue Monday towards the center, um, as well as something brighter like a sapphire. And then we also incorporate here some mid-tones like the fired clay, um, as well as shelter, and that just adds a nice balance. So some of the items here, there's another style of the overcoat. Um, here it's really about the quilted detail that makes the coat. Um, and then of course it also has kind of an oversized optional fur trim. There's the bomber jacket. Doesn't look like we've seen it before, but it could be a little bit more classic um, in style. This one is a little bit oversized and elongated. Um, it doesn't have a band at the bottom. And then it's also embracing this really nice digital print. And then on the right, we have another statement for coat. This one obviously aligns with the notion of nature. Some more of the must-haves for women's apparel, the parka, again, speaking to more of this utility notion. Um, this one also has a quilted stitching as a detail. There's another style of wide leg pants, um, which feature a high waist. Um, this could also be done in twill or denim or the high pile fabrics such as corduroy or velvet. And then there's another variety of sweater dress here. So it's oversized. Um, it definitely has those dropped shoulders, which add to the volume. Some additional items um, include the oversized shirt. This one's great, I think, just for layering. Um, there's another style of turtleneck here with an oversized shape. Um, it has these really big slouchy sleeves as well as a stand-up turtleneck. And there's another style um, of sweater as well, the oversized sweater, which features an elongated shape, the extra long sleeves, and it's set to mohair. Some of the footwear here, the heeled hiking. Um, this one, the rise is great. It's a, kind of a mid-calf rise. Um, it also has a nice ribbed gum sole. The shooty, this one featuring the elastic inserts on the side, as well as the lug sole. The hybrid loafer, um, this one, which really takes on more of a tailored appearance on top, but then the sole to it has an active um, appearance. And then we have the top handle bag. Um, it has a fold over closure, but what's great about this one is it incorporates that mixed media or hybrid technique whereby it has the nylon pocket that takes up half of it. There's also the updated hobo um, featuring ostrich leather. Um, it has the external purse pocket to it as well for utility. And then the tote, um, which also embraces that quilting which we saw throughout apparel. Um, and it has a built-in top handle. Some of the general accessories, we have the corset belt. Um, this has the center cinch, and then it has two um, double-belted tabs on the side. There's knit gloves. Um, these gloves are interesting because it kind of has an opera length to it, um, so it's a little bit different, and it's also incorporating um, the ribbed sweater knit. Then we have the mono lenses, um, the aviator silhouette, as well as the double studded temple. 
and a couple of the trend stories for Terra. Um, this one I feel like a lot of us could get into the mood for. It's called Cabin Fever. Um, and this one, imagine it, it's kind of full retreat mode. Um, I'm thinking of something like a cabin in the woods. Um, you're fit for the elements because there's a lot of focus on sweaters as well as outerwear here, um, but it's really about cozying up inside. Um, so again, those sweaters are so essential from turtlenecks, sweater dusters, um, also layering the sweater dress, but then incorporating some great outerwear um, like the fur overcoat. And then the final um, trend story that we have for Tara is called Supernatural. And this one's geared much more towards that young contemporary junior market. Um, but what's great here is you definitely see that kind of clash with um, nature as well as kind of a tech element here. And I think it comes through really well with the color palette because you have that um, algae, that brighter green that's incorporated there. You see some of the great mixed media constructions um, also borrowing from um, some traditional kind of outdoor gear elements, such as the quilting. Um, when it comes to graphics here, I think it's great to explore anything that's taken from nature or imposed from nature, such as Nordic lights. Um, some more attention to the outerwear, and it's a little bit younger, so looking at bomber jackets as well as puffers. So some of the brand alignment here, um, Scotch and Soda, I think, has a really great print um, and overall look um, that just feels very modern and current and young. There is Bull Boxer with boots um, that definitely embody an outdoor-inspired boot, especially with the color. Joya with um, kind of fringe details when it comes to jewelry, as well as Good Works Make a Difference. Um, with a great array of stacked bracelets. And then we have Rikva Fala, um, just embracing a classic um, pattern, so going into the conversation of plaids and positioning that in a nature spirit. Um, a great um, boot, which has a nice cutout detail and braided technique. And then finally, um, the phone case from Carved, which really takes um, nature imagery and then incorporates it to technology. Um, just a note, if you're not familiar with Fashion Snoop's white space, um, we have a solution that's really designed to streamline the creative process. Um, it allows you to go from research to creation in one space. You're able to create your own color palettes, combine collages, as well as palettes in one area, and that allows you to co-create with your team and share with anyone. Great. <clears throat> well, thank you, Melissa. Um, thank you so much for hosting our Women's Trend webinar. Now we're going to open it up to questions. Um, I see we already have one question in the queue, but if you do have any questions regarding trends or any of our upcoming UVM fashion shows, please feel free to add them to the Q&A chat box down below. We have Melissa from Fashion Snoops who can answer any trend-related questions, and Celeste Bohm, our VP of Retail Engagement, who can answer any questions regarding our shows or retailing, et cetera. So one question we have in the queue for Melissa is, would you say that millennial pink, that the millennial pink trend that's dominated the market for women's wear for the past several seasons will still be a large part of fall, winter, 1819? Um, to, to answer that question, I think millennial pink is something that's not going away, even going forward um, into spring, spring 19, uh, we're working on that on our end, we're seeing different variations of it. Um, so what we saw in fall 18, 19 in this presentation was what we called antique pink, um, and it was a little bit more dusty, but it's definitely something that we believe will continue forward in different variations. Um, in addition to that, I would also add that the reds are really important, and that's something that, you know, to look for, whether it comes to jewel tones or something that's brighter. Those are kind of the two power colors for the season. Great. And we had another question about the UBM Fashion Show calendar and if um, they could see that for 2018 and 2019. And yes, we can include that in an email after 
the webinar, you'll receive a thank you email, so we'll include a link to the 2018 UBM Fashion Show calendar. We don't have one for 2019 live yet, but that will be coming closer to the end of 2018. Okay, another question for Melissa. Denim has, has had a quiet, or Denim has, ha has had quite the year. Are we still seeing unfinished hems, embroidery, embellishments trending for Denim, or is it moving in another direction? I think we're definitely seeing it in in the embroidered realm, um, and that goes hand in hand with our Vanguard trend, which was much more DIY and craft inspired. So I think that that's something that's still going to have power, but then at the same time, there is a cleaner notion for denim um, that's happening at the same time. So I think there's, there's a couple of things happening in denim, but embroidery and the notion of DIY in denim is still there. Great. And then we have a few questions asking if these slides will be emailed to them. And yes, after this webinar, a, a link will be sent where the recorded presentation will be sent to them and the uh, slides as well. Um, and then another question for Melissa, what would be a must dress style for summer 2019 and what print theme? Um, summer 2019 is a little bit fast forward, <laughs> fast forward as we just did, um, you know, this season obviously for fall winter. Um, but I think that the slip dress is something that we definitely see continuing in terms of the silhouette. The mid calf hemline, that's something that's been on our radar and now it's being met with more acceptance. Um, so that's something to keep an eye out for as well. Great. Another question for Melissa, what about metallics and neons for 2018? I think in terms of, in terms of neons, what comes to mind is um, either the, the last narrative that we featured, which was um, Terra, so it was kind of that algae color, which almost had a lime undertone. Um, also speaking to neons, if you think of a really kind of powerful, almost fuchsia pink, that's where it would head, um, but I don't see it really extending past those colors. Great. Um, someone asked, I thought that the yellow was the new millennial pink. What's your take on that? There was a lot of yellow that we were seeing on the spring runways, and we used more of it when it came to spring 19 forecast. Um, when it comes to fall winter, there wasn't quite as much, or it was more of a mid-tone, like a mustardy color. Which mega trend do you think will be the most important to the footwear category? Sensi, Vanguard, New Romantic, or Terra? Um, you know what? That one's hard. I think in terms of commercial, I think Terra is prob probably the most commercial because it embodies more of like an outdoor gear trend. Um, but then it also really depends on what type of shoe you're doing because I think there's a lot of wonderful styles and new romantic that could definitely veer on the evening category. Great. Do you think the convergence of athleisure mixed with a bit of more dressed up pieces, such as tracksuits paired with a heeled booty, will still be big for 2018-2019? Absolutely, I think, and that's something that we see progress to um, into 2019. That's actually a huge focus. Um, so it's really about the mix of it and looking at items that are kind of staples when it comes to sport or athletic gear and then incorporating it. Like, for example, the polo, if you're doing, if you're doing knits, that's a huge one that we're seeing really, you know, shape up when it comes to spring 19. Cool. What are we seeing for the professional women that's a little bit more conservative? Um, for the professional women, I'd definitely look at um, the Sensei theme, which was more tailored inspired. That's something that I think is still new and emerging, that we're seeing a lot more of a tailored influence um, that's, that's kind of like taking over from where we saw the, the reworked shirt and looking at the, the button-down shirt and reinventing that and then going into, you know, that tailored feel. And I think that's new and we haven't seen that in quite a while. Cool. Do you have any tips on how to take these macro trends and translate them into more of a commercial audience? Um, you know, the macros are something that we do, 
you know, we kind of follow them and we track them. We project them on a yearly basis. Um, we actually just came out with a new set of them, and it's something that we continue to kind of track and see how brands embrace them. Um, so that's something that's available on Fashion Snoop's website um, if you if you want to dive deeper in them. But we do kind of use that as um, a big part of our forecasting as, you know, it, it's really important, I think, to be in touch with what's happening culturally and what, ha you know, consumers are doing to incorporate trends. Cool. Do you think there's an influence of animal prints for fall, winter? I think there's always animal prints. I don't think that they're, you know, they're, they're in or out. Um, I think they're always there and there's always a place. Here, I would kind of, you know, speaking to the presentation that we just gave, it fits with the nature component for sure. I think it could probably also um, go into the vanguard spirit, which was a more retro 70s DIY movement. Very cool. What about flared jeans? I think flares, um, that's something that, you know, obviously embodies that 70s spirit. Um, but speaking to the flares, I think the kick flare is really having a moment, and I think we'll be seeing a lot more of that. So the kick flare is just basically a cropped flare. Um, and I think those that's a great, really forward item for denim, and I think that'll, that'll catch on. What are the top three trends for accessories coming this coming? Coming fall. Um, you know what? We like to we like to kind of bucket our narratives as like the top four, um, as that really being kind of the guiding the guiding light. So I would just I would expand into that. Um, I would think like the Vanguard trend, the one that's DIY craft inspired, um, the Terra trend, which is outerwear inspired. Um, I think those are two really key ones. Great. What are your suggestions on key items for fall 2018 in the separate areas, specifically in tops? Um, I think that the tops are really spearheaded by um, the, the notion of Victorian influence. So I think if we think of a billowy blouse um, and just updates there. So it could be something that's a little bit more subtle, but the puff sleeve was really key in woven tops. Cool. Will we see colored denim? Colored denim, I think it's um, it's more of a novelty feel. I don't think it's going to be all over the place. Um, we know we work um, with denim mills and kind of see what's going on there. And I think what's interesting maybe is going into some of the jewel tones, um, such as we called it a catalyst green, but it's almost like a jewel toned green. Okay. Are we going to see more pearl jewelry for fall 2018, spring 2019? Yes, I think that the pearls um, definitely have a place for 1819 um, within that Victorian realm, whether it's, you know, a belt I think we had as well as earrings. Cool. What style do you recommend for fall, winter 2018, 2019 for people who live in warmer climates? Um, well, I live in a warmer climate, <laughs> so so I'm thinking to myself, you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to go into the Terra um, one because that one is mu is really about out you know traditional outerwear. Um, I think the Sensei one is interesting because it incorporates that tailoring which we haven't seen. Also, I love the one, the Vanguard, which is the DIY. Um, 70s spirited one. I think that there's a lot of great graphic trends that are present there that we're seeing a lot of. Do you think vinyl pieces will be seen more or is that trend coming to an end? Um, you know what, when it comes to vinyl or anything that looks um, a little bit more artificial, it makes me think of um, the Terra trend, which was the hybrid of the natural and the digital. So I feel like if there is a place for it, we could incorporate it maybe more as an accessory trend or something that is a detail. Cool. Aside from velvet, what will be other trends that will be holiday friendly for 2018, 2019? Um, I think in, in holiday, there's obviously always this embellished trend that's happening and it's like, what embellishment are we going to do? So I think that there's so many different ways that that could spin off. It could be embroidery, which I think is still super relevant from embroidered dresses. Um, it could also be something like sequins or beads, which are really relevant when it comes to holiday too. Cool. 
And then another question is asking about camouflages and if they relate to any of these trends. Camouflage, I definitely fit with the, the Terra one, the outerwear inspired one, um, especially because there's also a lot of greens in that palette, so it's a great place to get that across. And then are there any notable trends happening in Intimate? In Intimates, we actually, at Fashion Sims, we have a whole division dedicated to Intimates, and we actually do, we roll out the same narratives, and then they connect to the Intimates world. Um, one of the ones that I think is really beautiful, um, believe it or not, is the Sensei one. Um, if you take that, although it is tailored, there's also this much more sensual notion to it. Like, if you remember the slides that had the wrapped sweater, and things like that, and it's very serene and embodies a lot of those softer tones um, to it. And I think um, some of those shibori techniques when it comes to dyeing and nice, like, delicate Japanese florals. Very cool. Will choker still be in, or is it over? And what is the necklace trend for this fall? Um, I think I'll speak to the choker trend. Mm -hmm. I think that that's still happening. Um, and that one also kind of continues with that Victorian notion that's so strong for the season. And then what is the necklace trend for this fall? Or this fall sorry. Um, honestly, I can't narrow it down, <laughs> down to just one. <laughs> Fair. Okay. Do you think backpacks, especially used as a purse, will still be on trend going forward, or is this trend winding down? Um, I think that backpacks, they have a place, even if you consider something like more structured, like what we saw in the Sensei trend, um, like something that's more polished and structured and still a backpack. I think you could see it both in that realm, which is much more sophisticated, as well as something that's more utility inspired. How are the trends going to... Influence intimates, bras and panties in particular? Um, that's something that I think you would need to look more into our intimates forecast. Cool. Uh, what is the top embellishment application? Pearls, embroidery, beads, jewels, or something else? I would definitely say embroidery. And what about stripes? What are your thoughts on stripes? Um, stripes, what we're seeing, it's a lot of them are associated with athleisure, um, which I think is kind of where it's heading, even when we go into spring 19. Um, so taking something like a classic track stripe and leveraging that or any kind of an athletic stripe and, you know, kind of reworking that. What will definitely be dead in fall, winter 2018? <laughs> you know what? That, that's, one, that's one of the hardest questions that we, that we ever get because, you know, the audience is always so broad. So that's a really tough one to answer. Um, okay. Uh, do you think that the over-the-knee boot will still be trending in 2018, 2019? Um, from what I see, I think it definitely will still be trending. Do you have a footwear-specific forecast for fall? We also have a complete all of all of the markets like intimates and lounge, as well as um, footwear and all of the divisions of accessories, um, jewelry, and everything. We have a specific forecast on fashion snoops for them. So today was really just like a slice of in, of inspiration and information, um, but we dive really deep into that, and there's more items and um, everything on the site. And we also, to note on that, we also have a footwear dedicated trend report that speaks to fall 2018-2019, fall winter, um, that was created by Fashion Snoops that's hosted on ubmfashion.com if you search on the blogs under the footwear blog. Um, <clears throat> okay, Art Deco inspired accessory is still trending with the Vanguard trend? Yes. Okay. Aside from the camp socks, is there a notable influence in socks hosiery? Is no show, is, a, is the no show sock still in? Um, I think that no show socks like that always has has you know a place in the market. Um, I think the the more notable or the one that we featured in this particular presentation was the one that you want to show off. Um, so we spoke a little bit more towards that with, like, the Lurex or applying um, a traditional pattern like Argyle. And are ponchos dead? Um, I would put ponchos in the category with capes, so I would say no. Um, <laughs> in, in terms of outerwear, I think, you know, you could kind of go either way if it's a poncho or a cape. We were leaning a little bit more towards the cape just because it was Victorian-inspired, but if it's more of you know, an outer outerwear conversation or outdoor gear conversation or maybe a little bit younger, we could still definitely see a poncho. Great. 
Well, those are all the questions we have. So I just want to say a big thank you to Melissa from Fashion Snoops for hosting the webinar. And uh, until next time, everyone. Thank Thanks. you.